Hello everyone, this is Kathy from The Daily Marker. How are you today? Um, it is day 19 of the coloring challenge and it's the Simon Says Stamp Blog Hub. So I wanna share with you how I colored this adorable little girl from Simon. She's called Sweet, no, Melody's Easter. And she's just as cute as can be. She's designed by Sherry Carroll. Um, I'm trying something new. My neck has been bothering me, so I'm coloring on a drafting portable little table thing. So hopefully this works, but we'll just see. Um, so I'm starting with a light and a medium color here. Um, I'll be writing the colors right there on the side. I usually always use E50 and E53 on my face. Um, so we'll just keep on rolling here. Um, when it's a Simon Says Stamp blog hop, I like to kind of spend a little bit more time on a card. So that's what I'm doing today. So I've stamped multiple images of Sweet Melody. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting and pasting. I want her hair to pop up and her dress to kind of flip. I want to get lots of dimension. Um, now you'll see I'm picking some color up from the barrel of the lid. It helps me blend the two colors together. Um, it acts as like a paintbrush and then when you're finished with the lighter color make sure you get the marker off the tip there. Now I'm um, bringing in some cheat color. I always use RV10 and that's really pretty quick color. Um, so I'm just going over it one more time. Sometimes I'll go over it with a zero but always go over it with your lightest color and you can just kind of blend that out. Um, I found that when I do videos, I say either um or so quite often. So I'm lowering this table, hopefully that's better. And I sit in front of a big window so the light's always changing and I try and adapt that, but it's hard to do, so bear with me. Now I'm gonna, be coloring her hair like duh that's what I'm doing right I'm coloring her hair and I'm starting with the lighter color first I noticed she's got a headband there so I colored that just so I don't keep coloring over it and then I have to deal with it later so I wanted to my goal was to have kind of like a light sandy brown hair it ended up a little darker than I thought but um that doesn't matter. I enjoyed coloring and that's all that matters. So I'm bringing in my darker color, which is kind of a red tone, um, YR14. And I'm, I always start at a line and just kind of brush, feather that color in. Um, now, since I'm cutting this out, I can go off, off, you know, some it just blows my mind how sometimes I can't think of what I'm saying. You can go off the paper just to get a little bit of a lighter shading on the inside. And I always like to have some darker roots. Um, so I always bring in a darker color like by the part and then just in the little nooks and crannies. And that can go ahead and blend out. So um, that's what I'm doing here. And with hair, you can, you know, you can go crazy and just keep on blending it um, and keep bringing color in and then softening it and then adding a little bit more and it, it can end up taking a lot of time. A lot of people do some hair with a very artistic look where they show the feather marks. I tend to like to um, blend it out with a lighter color. Um, so it's kind of whatever works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit because time is of the essence. But I do want you to see me finish because the it's just, I don't know, I think you guys like seeing the process. So um, I'm picking up some more of that color from the barrel. Um, I really want you to try this technique on some scrap paper or something if you haven't before. Also, you can scribble that darker color on a palette or on an acrylic block or even some packaging. Sometimes I'll do that on an airplane. And that really helps you blend 
your darker colors, um, especially when they're not in the same color family. So I always say, I always like to go back and add just in the little nooks and crannies um, with a darker color. So I'm just darkening up those tips a little bit and stuff. And I'm in an advantage here because I'm going to be cu cutting out the hair. Um, so I'm, Simon has these great little backgrounds. So I'm stamping um, in the, a memento gray ink on the dress and the sleeve. I'll be cutting those out. Again, this, this is, I'm just spending a little bit more time on this particular card. And I'm going to pick just a whole bunch of bright colors to do some coloring with no shading on the dress. I'm just going to fill in those little um, squares. I've got all my colors down here on the right hand side and you can just take a screenshot of that or something. Once the coloring challenge is over, I have to figure out why it seems like my videos aren't as crisp and clear as they were before. But um, I just, it's just hard keeping up right now, to be honest. So um, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit too. But I'm just randomly filling in the little squares. Um, it's a great, fun little pattern. And you don't want to go crazy and think about, you know, counting every fifth one is blue and every third one is green just do it and actually if you plan out your card a little better than i do i know that i want to i'm going to cut out the arm and i'm going she's going to be holding the bunny but i didn't plan any further than that because the majority of the dress is going to be covered up so it really works if you plan ahead you save yourself some time so if you can do that, I highly recommend it. But these are, these are some fun colors and I'm just bringing in a little bit of the bright pink to match the flowers that I'll be adding. Now I want to um, mention when you take a look at the card, I'm using a die from, um, it doesn't really even matter because I looked online. Simon used to carry it. It's been discontinued. I think it's Power Poppy and they don't even have it anymore either. Um, it's called Screen Door Die or something and it's not available. Mama Elephant has a great window die cut that I used maybe a week ago and it's awesome and I couldn't find it and that's what I wanted to use. So since I couldn't find that, I reached for this old die, which isn't even available. So I just wanted to apologize for that. But I suggest you get the window die. It's, it's to die for. It's precious. And um, I, I'm linking in the surprise supplies, the screen that I used on the door. It'd be great in a window as well. Now you, you've seen me. I'm cutting this out. I'm layering... Um, the arm over the dress and always I take a memento black marker and go around the edges to I don't want to see any white on my edges so I love cutting out hair and layering it. it ends up looking kind of like a wig but it gives it so much dimension and character and again I don't do this on all my cards just sometimes it's fun to take a little bit of extra time for someone really special um, and when you are cutting Keep in mind, you can cut certain things off. You don't need to spend a lot of time cutting. And this is my memento marker again. I like to do it along the way. Now, if you have Copic markers, you can use a Copic marker around the edge. I used to use black, but I got way too many smudges. And if you hold it on too long, um, the color absorbs into your coloring. So you can see the top half of my wig I've already glued down the sides of her hair and I'm just um, using glossy accents to glue down just the shoulder part of this because I want to put the bunny underneath her arm. Now I did think ahead I didn't need to stamp or color the other arm because the bunny will be coloring that. Now notice the tips on the hair they're flipped up and the dress is flipped up too. And I'm just adding glossy accents to the crown of the head 
and then I'll be putting this down and it just gives it so much dimension. Um, okay, so in a second, we're going to be, the bunny is such a fast color. It's amazing how fast it is. So it's good to a lot, you know, some time on the important part of the image and then not so much on the other. So I'm cutting just around this bunny. Um, he's so cute and I'm going to use now, if you look at the colors on the right, some of them are repeated because I wanted to show you where the hair, I like to try and use the same colors on an image so you guys aren't overwhelmed, like, oh my God, she's 50 million. So, um, but I always encourage you to use the colors that you have on hand. So um, I'm just adding some glossy accents to her shoes and to the centers of the flowers. And now we're gonna color this little guy and do it kind of quick. So I'm using the same cheek color, RV10, um, and just putting some pink down in different random areas, not requiring a lot of thought here. Um, you could also use just a little bit of Distress Ink on the bunny and call it a day. Um, so I'm using E50. It's very light, which I like. And I'm just, this is not sped up. This is real time. This is how quick this can be. You can just kind of, I like to say sploosh, it's not a word, but you can just throw that color on there. You don't have to think about it too much. Um, and then I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of that darker color because I use it on her hair. Um, and I'm not like getting this special feathering or anything like that and it just, not thinking about where I'm doing it or anything, because as you can see, it doesn't look very good. But it's what you do after that. So I'm using the light color, the E50, to smooth that coloring out. And then I'm going to grab my trusty, dirty rag that I've been using for years, a little piece of a um, towel, and I'll be putting the Cobic Various ink on the rag and getting it nice and damp, not fully saturated. And then I'm gonna put it down on this and get that nice textured effect. And think, you know, this whole video is 10 minutes and I'm spending maybe two minutes. Here's the rag and the ink. And um, always, always put that lid back on. And then I like to um, move fluff up the nibs on the the texture on there and then um you know i just kind of scrunch it to make um god it's like whatever to absorb it throughout the rag oh my goodness see i'm not trained to watch myself and then try and think of what i'm doing so I'm just adding a little color on the paws because usually animals' paws are darker than their body. And then I'm going to put some glossy accents on there. I'm just putting a little bit more color on the cheeks and the nose. Um, I just like to dabble. That's enjoyable to me. But th the bunny's really done. Now once you add that color, um, the texture with the rag, you can heat gun it. Use your heat gun on it or just let it dry. And sometimes I like to just pull in another color. I'm just adding a very hint of pink. I don't know why, just because I like to futz around. And then there's a little bit of that liquid left on the rag. And there you have it. I cut it out, tucked it under her arm. I colored some sheep and put them behind the screen door. So I'm linking a window and that's it today. Thank you so much for watching. There's a giveaway on my blog and have a great day.